Greetings from Delhi Medical Association and eMedi News. Welcome to our show, Chat with Dr. KK. We have with us Dr. Sarvesh Tandon, who is a reader in forensic medicine at Sabdijang Hospital and who is also a finance secretary of IMA uh, East Delhi branch. Welcome to our show. Thank you, sir. Uh, my basic thing is very clear that forensic was taught to us in our medical college only for one and a half year, maybe one year now. It is now. No, uh, it is still one and a half. It is still one and a half year. Now, my message is that for a general practitioner, for a family physician, if he is updating his knowledge, and today if I am talking about the year 2013, what is new which has come in the fields of forensic medicine which you feel that every general practitioner must be updated with? As far as the private practitioners are concerned, in forensic medicine, not only the medical legal cases which come into the hospitals or the private clinics, they should be properly attended. Emergency cases should not be discarded or neglected, they should be properly attended. As far as the other concept of medical negligence which is attached with forensic medicine is concerned, proper documentation of the records and proper explanation of the treatment being done should be carried out in the concerned case records and case sheets. A case comes with suspected poisoning. Okay. And uh, is it necessary to preserve the rice tube aspirate? In case every case of poisoning which comes to any government hospital or a private hospital, police has to be informed in all the cases, preferably homicidal cases, otherwise in almost in all the cases. And whether gastric aspirate or vials tube suction or blood or urine, whatever is required in that case, that should be preserved in the concerned casualty of that hospital and should be properly handed over to the concerned police. So that is a, 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 I'm giving you a hypothetical situation. A, a girl comes with a attempted suicide. Okay. She has taken around say 15, 20, 30 tablets of Alprex okay. and the parent says please don't file an FIR, don't make don't. it a police case. We are ready to give it in writing that we do not need a police case. Huh. What is the situation? As far as the hypothetical case you are saying, this is a very common thing in the casualties of different hospitals, especially private sector. But each and every case, whether the parents or relatives want or not, should be reported to the police as per the law. So, it has to be reported to the police. Let the police decide what to do. Let the parent and parents is, decide what to do. Let me say, doctor should refuse to give a treatment without... No, no They have to give a treatment, of course. No refusal. But, no refusal, but they have to inform the police. At any cost. At any cost. And what about a, a GP at... Uh, he is called at home. Okay. If a GP is called at home, say okay. midnight at 12 o'clock, okay. to see a similar case, hmm. and if, the, if he says, I am informing the police, they will say, please go. We don't want treatment from you. We will we'll call somebody else. It is always better that what, if you have uh, gone to somebody's home to give any medical treatment or attention, you should write, write it there on a prescription pad and that prescription pad should be brought and later on it should be passed on to the police. Ne, but they should be informed to the police at the time? Yes. Even if you are, Even asked if you to are unable to inform the police at the time at their house, when you come back after half an hour or 20 minutes or 20, 15 minutes, you can then inform. Your job is to inform the police yes. if you happen to see a case which belongs to a medical legal case. Because if later on the situation comes that why did you not inform, then the answer that the parents or the relatives did not ask for it or they refused to it, that is no excuse. That is not an excuse. That is no Anything excuse. else in the year 2013 in the field of forensic medicine? As, as far as the uh, Delhi scenario is concerned, seeing this case and a number of uh, medical legal cases, proper medical legal development should be done by the Delhi government so that all the government hospitals and private hospitals are kept in loop and the proper medical legal services are planned. What about, the, what about the labs doing the forensic analysis? Say if people say that a, a, a report is not available in time, it takes three months, six months, trans India, you don't have enough that laboratories. Is, that is a big problem. That, that is actually the domain of forensic science, not of forensic medicine, which is being controlled by the respective home departments of the respective state governments. The labs are very less, one or two or three in a state and uh, there are number of districts in different states which give their visera or whatever no, material. I will give you a, again a hypothetical situation. Okay. And my hypothetical situation is that you have private hospitals. Okay. 80% of the healthcare is in private sector. Okay. Why there are no private forensic labs? If I have, say for example, if, if it is taking time, huh. if it is my case, I should be able to give a sample uh, from a, a private lab. Whether it is, whether it is uh, acceptable in the court of law is a different issue. 
But why forensic labs in the private sector? Pra actually, all these labs are authenticated labs. These are certified labs by the Ministry of Home and then uh, NCPCR. And then uh, they are uh, being accepted in the courts of law. In private uh, concept, these labs are not being created. But if somebody in the starts world. tomorrow, the courts of law may start he accepting them? May or may not, because uh, when the other labs are available, the courts or the government machinery would still rely on the government's certified or accredited courts. So, Vish, if you would not have been a doctor, what you would have become? I would have become a social person, helping people, encouraging people to look into the uh, help of different people. And of course, uh, something of paramedical help type that would have been much close to my heart. And do you feel that uh, uh, in any con in our country, in every state, the police personnel who reaches the victim in the first five minutes should be accompanied by a paramedic worker, or the police personnel should be trained in first aid? At least some first aid uh, should be taught to the police personnel, especially the PCR people who immediately or within few minutes reach and uh, later on the ambulances or their PCR events should have at least one or two or they have a call center number so that they can also be called. So the message what Dr. Savesh has given is very clear that if you deal with a medical legal case, it's your duty to inform the police. Never say that the relations did not want it to inform the police. That's all for today. Thank you to be with us. Thank we'll you, sir. We'll come back with one more show. Till that, goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you, sir.